DOS Keyboard gives users DOS Boot for linking to open source software. That's true. And Thunderbird has a new look. And along with it, a new icon. Lenovo updates the firmware, and it joins the Linux vendor firmware service. And NASA wants to see your rover, the one you haven't built yet. Opera launches as a snap for Linux users, which makes it much easier to install. And the filament lightweight game engine was just open sourced by Google, and the possibilities are endless. Man, this sounds fun. Get ready for it. We're going to do it because this is another great day for Linux, everyone. So let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, that midweek break where we sit back, relax, talk about all things open source, and Pedro looks confused like he normally does. That's what he does. That's why we have him here. It's kind of brilliant. Um, I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And like I said, that's one Pedro Mateus. Uh, getting ready to dive into this. Doing a quick checkup. See what's going on. Because Jill, I know you're just getting back yeah. from w w with all your nerd friends from yes. here in Las Vegas <laughs> hanging out. Trouble. Troubles. It's terrifying. I, I actually got lots of troubles. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a big giant one over there in the corner. <laughs> Did you and Steve have but, a good time? Yep. Yes, we did. And uh, it, it was awesome. We got to hear Patrick Stewart surprise appearance and announcement that Captain Jean-Luc Picard is back in Star Trek again. Yay. And they're going to make a new new show just for him. And um, my broadcasting rig from the con for the Friday Night Foobar was a success. Uh, that was awesome. So now I know I can do LWW or or the stream, the game streams uh, remotely. <laughs> So that worked out nicely. <laughs> Pedro, did you do anything half as interesting? Uh, no, no, I did not. <laughs> I'm back to work now and uh, we're doing this big uh, domain move. So, yeah, no, there's just a lot of Windows domain stuff that I have to worry about. <laughs> not too bad. Uh, not a whole lot to report over here. I'm still waiting some, for some things to come in to stick the last little bits of our video rig together. Hashtag Bifrost. I uh, did learn something. I don't like load testing things because I'm stupid, but it's always fun when somebody load tests things for us. Like, I was like, hmm, can our web zone handle a half a million empty requests in 30 minutes? Yes, it can. <laughs> Learn that. Uh, that was fun. Interesting to know. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's get right into it with something. It's kind of surprising because <laughs> yeah, I knew DOS keyboard was a thing, but this comes from our mechanical keyboards, which is the thing on Reddit. DOS mm. keyboard banning users from the 5Q forums for mentions of open source. And this was from a tweet from Stephen Byrne. It says, so I got banned from DOS keyboard forums for telling people there's an open source alternative to the Windows only software they provide. I will never buy one of these keyboards again. Again, and yeah. I, I did a little digging around into this. For, further on to that, they seem to be actively trying to remove any mentions of the open source software, which is the color, and the Daifaba. Mm -hmm. And even on their wiki pages, I mean, it's like they're actively against this project, which is just a clean open source tool to use your psychotic RGB Atron <laughs> mm -hmm. keyboard, which, uh, yeah weird yeah this is a bad move by dos um i have i have one of their older dos mechanical keyboards and i guess i won't use it anytime soon that that doesn't make me happy <laughs> and i have a knockoff of the dos keyboard with brown switches that is supported by open source party third party open source and even corsair and razor have open source so software for their keyboards which i use so this yeah, is just and bad. <laughs> DOS, here's the thing. You guys are targeting a niche market. You're targeting a niche within the mechanical keyboard niche. So mm -hmm. what you're doing right now is alienating an entire other niche. It's like, oh, Linux users, Mac users, anyone who's not using Windows, all of a sudden, none of them have any reason to use one of your keyboards yeah that's that's not good that's no. really not good yeah i mean unfortunately i kind of <laughs> got a gut feeling they're gonna learn a very costly lesson for yeah. this just for something that is completely harmless and they shouldn't be against and yeah 
Cat. Even Rocat. Rocat being the gaming, yeah. you know, the gaming <laughs> company, they provide hardware to anyone who's willing to develop the software on Linux. They won't do it themselves because they don't want to, mm -hmm. but they'll provide you the hardware so you can do it. So, yeah. I guess mm. maybe I could understand this harder if they provided software for something other than Windows, but they don't. They don't. So... <laughs> Okay, I just thought everyone mm -hmm. might find that interesting. Pedro, we have good news, everyone, for laptops. And oh, Lenovo. yes. Yes, we do. But only some of them. Uh, because Lenovo uh, has uh, officially become a member of the Linux Vendor Firmware Service, uh, which uh, you may remember that we talked about a while back. There was a thing between this and uh, System76 not wanting, um, not wanting to use it or running into one of the uh, GNOME developers' egos. And, uh, well, uh, Lenovo, on the other hand, they seem okay with uh, someone actually doing the Linux work for them. And they said, yep, uh, some uh, laptops, will you will be able to uh, update the UEFI firmware on some of the laptops and some other uh, Lenovo devices. It's the ThinkPads and the ThinkStations, the... Mm -hmm most recent versions at least because i do have this uh x240 mm -hmm. right here and this one isn't supported uh yeah. neither is the mm -hmm. lenovo b5080 the cheapo laptop what i had uh that one isn't supported either so yeah that's bad i really <laughs> like this yeah. this is um <laughs> right i do think lenovo should be applauded for the work done so far Due to the enormity of the task, rather than chastised about coming to the party a little late, if anyone from HP is reading this, comma, you are now officially late. It's like, yes. ooh, shots fired. Um, yeah. Well, Lenovo is the second company after Dell to join the Linux vendor yep. firmware service. <laughs> mm -hmm. And HP always takes a little longer to do things. <laughs> so, and, yeah, uh, HP has issues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, this saves you the hassle from using a USB drive to flash your firmware or the dreaded booting into Windows. So, yay, mm -hmm. you can just do it directly from the software center now. And oh, that, that's that awesome. all happy. Um, it's a, is, are there any laptops that you genuinely have to have a copy of Windows to update the... There are quite a few laptops there that uh, they yeah. only provide uh, software for you to do it over Windows. Or... Yeah. You can create a USB flash drive, like Joel mentioned, and boot from it. Mm. Sounds dangerous. Mozilla, Thunderbird, blog. What's new in Thunderbird 60? Uh, Ryan Sipes, uh, formerly of System76, right? Watson? Yes, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thunderbird 60, the newest stable release of everyone's favorite desktop email client, has been released. Uh, it's got a new look, the uh, Photon look, kind of like... Uh, What's rocking with the latest Firefox? It's apparently has saved a few pixels. And um, tabs are square. Title bar can be toggled on and off. It's got a brand new shiny fancy icon that I couldn't tell you the <laughs> difference from the last one. Aww. And uh, I'm sorry I don't pay attention to these things. I have monochrome. Uh, various improvements to the calendar and attachment managers. So good news, everyone. Uh, I haven't, I noticed that this hasn't been pushed out to, uh, the Ubuntu's yet. Has anybody ever played no. with this? Uh, it, I downloaded the, um, the binaries in Reddit. It works fine. Uh, it's, uh, the, the icon, uh, res uh more resembles more than a little, the, uh, papyrus icon that yeah. they already had for thunderbird it's just that the papyrus yeah. icon is very flat while this one does have like the feathers and the layered effect so yeah <laughs> but very similar yeah and it actually looked really nice i i, I downloaded it as well and, and it ships with new light and dark themes by default which is really nice uh uh, I like my dark themes. <laughs> so I got a question. Now, I think just out of habit, probably for the better part of a decade plus, or whenever Thunderbird became a thing, I started using it just for email. Is there a good replacement for Thunderbird that just does email? Um, K, uh, no. No. K-mail yeah. does, um, does uh, yeah. the uh, calendar stuff, too. Mm. Yeah. I'm looking for that. Send some feedback next week if you know. Yeah. Uh, preferably not something in the terminal as hackers still that feed. would be. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to use Pine, but yeah. Still, still feed is the default in some um, 
lightweight distros. Mm -hmm. So could be. <laughs> Might take a look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, email to the browsers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is Opera. Opera launches as a snap for Linux users. And uh, th this is really, really great. Because this is, of course, the web browser that invented tabs and speed dial. And it's actually one of my favorites. And now that it's an easy to install snap, it'll make it easier for everyone to install uh, Linux users and newbies alike. And um, actually, I do kind of remember their web page was uh, a, a, it was a little hard sometimes to, f to find the right um, version to download for your distro. <laughs> and um, as we know, Opera pioneered the mobile market and used to be the only web browser available for older feature phones and smartphones. Mm. And yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> it's kind of neat. I, I dig it. It's not available in Flathub. Sorry, I wouldn't check. Yeah. Uh, I did the sudo snap install. It's like, oh, look, that works. Then I immediately did sudo snap remove. Uh, <laughs> nothing against Opera. It's been around for a long, long time. It works. It renders things because they've switched rendering engine to Chromium, right? So yeah. WebKit. That's the Blink engine. Yeah. Uh, that mm -hmm. I tried installing. Have you? played around with this chill like the snapcraft io web zone where it's like oh click here to install i was like oh all right let's see if this nightmare fuel works and i clicked on it and it's like okay yeah. are you sure you want to launch i was like yeah let's pepsi challenge poof nothing open <laughs> htop and i was like are you doing anything with that it's like no yeah it ran okay on 1604 but i hadn't tried it on 1804 hmm. <laughs> I wonder what the market yeah. share for Opera is these days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing uh -huh. not very big. Yeah. No, but I'm, I'm hoping this will increase the, the user base for it because I do love Opera. And again, I like Vivaldi browser, which mm -hmm. uh, some of the developers from Opera move over to Vivaldi. And that's why there's a, it has a very similar look and feel. Well, so, definitely yeah. creating tab browsing. And another neat thing Opera did way back when and mm -hmm. still does, and you can still see that in the genetics of Vivaldi is... When you launch it, relaunch it, all of your tabs. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. still exactly. there by default. And that's like, yep. that's a handy feature. So yeah. Firefox used to do that by default, but apparently they discontinued that option. Mm -hmm. You can still enable it, but yeah. Uh, I have nothing against Opera. All I have is against <laughs> Snaps because to this day, they still create that stupid lowercase folder in your home uh, root. <laughs> It's like, oh, it's everything is properly capitalized. All the folders uh, are consistent, except for the snap folder. It's just yeah. a lowercase folder that stupidly spawns smack in the middle of your home folder. You get issues, man. Um, <laughs> hey, I, I will say that snaps work. The only like legitimate, it's not even a complaint. I'm just like, really? Is when you have a couple of things open that have been installed through snap and you do DF in the console. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what are all these? Li oh, right. We need those for some reason, um, <laughs> which we do. I'm just giving it a hard time. Snap's good. App images are good. Uh, everything else, flat packs are great. Use, use whatever. But this is now available, easy to install. And if it's a jam, go check it out. What do we have up next? Up next, we have a new pipe offering a bit of a bounty uh, if anyone would like to integrate PeerTube functionality into new pipe proper. Uh, so what they want to see is uh, displaying trending videos on the main screen of new pipe, searching for videos and channels, displaying videos and channels, obviously, downloading videos, and making a new pipe automatically choose an instance from the PeerTube uh, from the multitude of PeerTube instances. So that is a very good one there. I don't know, maybe it's just me. It sounds a bit low, 250 euros for all of this functionality to but basically- Peter, pay, pay, pay. <laughs> you, you can wait like 12 to 14 hours since this is payable in cryptocurrency of your choice. So <laughs> it, it, it could be well worth nothing or twice as much. Yeah, that's the thing. If they'd said like, we'll pay you like uh, not point two of a bitcoin yeah you could wait a little bit and maybe get some more money out of it but no they specifically say 250 euros so they're just going yeah. to pay whatever the equivalent of that is in crypto so yeah it's for me it seems like having a centralized client for a decentralized video streaming service is defeating <laughs> the purpose a little bit. I can see its usefulness, but so yeah. can the multitude of copyright lawyers out there who are just 
foaming at the mouth. It's like, oh God, yes, please do. So we know exactly where to go and who to target. You know, uh, <laughs> I look forward to the hate mail. That'd be a good thing because PeerTube, almost to its fault, is unusable to find stuff that you want to see just due to the deluge, deluge mm -hmm. of just copyrighted yeah. French music videos um, <laughs> that are <laughs> constant. I would like something to sort that out. Uh, what are your thoughts, Joe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I um, enjoy using the PeerTube uh, YouTube uh um, I enjoy using uh, the new pipe YouTube player on Android um, that's available on F droid. And it would be nice to have a peer tube, you know, a, a search as well as YouTube. That would be really awesome. And I can watch more blender videos too on it. <laughs> that, that's another thing that is on peer tube. A lot of yeah. blender videos. Yes. But <laughs> we're on there as well. Go check it out. If it's your thing. I think 10 people watched our last episode. So, we're making progress. We're, we're, we're going to lock that platform <laughs> down, kids. Ten times that, and uh, we'll have about the same people watching on PeerTube as we do on YouTube. It'll be brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Firefox 63, out of process. Oh, yes. So this has been a thing in the Windows builds for a while, but they were still unavailable uh, on Linux. And this is the out-of-process uh, extensions, web extensions specifically. Uh, so what uh, Mozilla call web extensions are uh, the... It's the way, browser agnostic way, that they implement those extensions. That way it's not locked just to Firefox. So if you want to make that extension available to other browsers, you could far more easily or bring other... Um, extensions to Firefox just as well. And on Linux, those extensions were running on the exact same process as the main uh, render for the browser. So that was likely to cause issues. And let's say if one of those extensions crashed, the whole browser would crash along with it. Now they're moving those away to put them in their own process. Uh, they, they've already uh, started implementing that on Linux a while back. Uh, they have like each tab is has its own process and the browser proper is on an entirely different process from that so it's it's a good idea uh i don't know exactly how some extensions as they work today how they would work from another different process maybe it's just my lack of knowledge in that particular area but stuff like ad blockers is it going to introduce even more latency now that you load a page so that the ad blocker has to go from one process to the main process to figure out which elements to block out and then it'll render the web page? Maybe it's just me, maybe it's not even an issue, but kind of curious to see how that's going to work. <laughs> Yeah, and I was, you know, th this is actually really good because the sandboxing should prevent crashes and web extensions, which were formerly known as add-ons in Firefox, from crashing Firefox as a whole, which is definitely a good thing because we've we've that there have been years of <laughs> issues with that, <laughs> and um, um, I'm very happy that this functionality is finally coming to Linux with the release of Firefox 63 later this year. So this is a really awesome thing. <laughs> it's definitely a good thing. And if you want to try it, play the home game. If you're running nightlies, you can do the about config, uh, just filter extensions, web extensions, remote. Mm -hmm. Set that to YOLO and um, it'll be good. You can do it yourself. So rendering in Google. All I know about yeah. this is I went through, I, I cracked <laughs> open the star.md and I was like, that's a novel. <laughs> oh, oh, this is awesome. Filament is a physically based rendering engine for Android, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. And, uh, and it was just open sourced by Google. So uh, they had created this engine that, you know, I had read about quite a while ago. And um, it's actually right now used in the game engine, used in the application scene form, which is used for creating aug augmented reality content for Android. And of course, it uses our beloved Vulcan on the back yes. end. Yay! <laughs> and yes, as Ven was saying, the documentation for filament is extremely detailed and is one of the best explanations of how a PBR, or physically based rendering, works and can be used as teaching material. I will use it in my classroom to teach students how game engines work. Why did, why and... did they render so many quick cam <laughs> VCs? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I guess that's what they it's had like, available. Ooh, different textures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's really neat. You know, it has all the different shaders. It shows, uh, you know, Blinn, Gerard, and 
and all the different shaders rendering. And I definitely could see filament being used as a rendering engine for Blender. I see that as definitely a thing because this is a, a lightweight Vulcan renderer. Uh, awesome. Yeah, awesome. So, and again, it was tailored for our smartphones, Android smartphones, but it can be used on every operating system as a lightweight alternative. Basically, yeah, you don't need much for it. Mm -hmm. CMake, Clang, and Ninja. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, doing so really well there, install. Google. <laughs> 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 but the uh, the backends, it's, it doesn't just support Vulkan. Uh, they have yes. full support for Vulkan 1.0, but they also support, obviously, because it's Google, Android, <laughs> OpenGL, <laughs> yeah. uh, Open yeah. <laughs> and OpenGL ES. Uh, so, yeah, those are still available. And it's, hey, it's mm -hmm. more stuff. And if this has the Google pedigree, by all means, give me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Good news, everyone. Uh, I know we've talked about this, but I just want to bring it back up. Um, this is from the Republic. All this in our show notes. Go check it out at WebZone after the fact. Installing Windows apps on Linux is about to get easier with Winepack, which is a thing. You might have known about it, but they're making progress with it as far as what they have shipping. And listen, you know, I, I don't necessarily love this idea but this is the future of wine and you know i i say this as someone who's tangoed with that wacky recursive backronym for two decades and mm -hmm. this approach makes all the sense this is a little article just saying what it is how to set it up and ease of use because I, you pop over to the uh, wine pack on the githubs there's a couple of things in here one of them really stands out to me is uh fortnite starcraft 2 overwatch mm -hmm. stuff that this is what I was thinking about. If you don't know, we, we do this little gaming show on Saturdays where we occasionally <laughs> talk about video games. Um, <laughs> is I, I think the days of having install scripts and all, because you think about it, Pedro, think about it, Jill, and it's like, okay, I want yeah. to install Skyrim. Let's just see, say that back in the day. And I was like, well, you need this version of wine. You need to install this stuff, you know, mm -hmm. as far as your, which version mm -hmm. of mono, which version of uh, VC, whatever. And, uh, as opposed to install blank and you're going to get it as flat back with all the depths. Now it's going to get heavy if you've got a bunch of games going on, but that mm -hmm. sounds a lot simpler, mm -hmm. especially in the horrible, horrible future that I hope never comes to pass. If developers start mm -hmm. shipping their air quotes around Linux ports or their software, say you need to install word or something like that. And Microsoft's look, here's word mm -hmm. for Linux in one. Yeah. You know, uh, for games, that's, Possibly going to happen. Uh, maybe not as widespread, but uh, it there will be someone who's going to attempt to like push out their game as a flat pack or a snap or something. What I want to see, and yes, wine uh, pack is great. What I want to see them do is uh, basically what Strider has been doing and uh, mm -hmm. just include DXVK into everything. Yes. Because if you're already pushing mm -hmm. out wine or a game or something else that requires that hardware uh, rendering, just include the XVK, please. Please. Yes. <laughs> That'd be good. But then again, Strider, if he, he, I'm surprised he hasn't already borged this system for um, <laughs> launching games. I don't know. It's yeah. a neat thing. And I think that's definitely going to be the future just for ease of use. And yeah, yeah definitely. That makes sense. Mm hmm. Yeah, there have been talk talk of wine packs for quite some time, and now they are finally here. I know um, uh, Popey and Wimpy were working on um, uh, the snaps with the the installing Windows Steam to run games, mm -hmm. and this will mm -hmm. be another alternative to that, and yeah. making it easy for the average user and us Linux users to <laughs> install apps under Wine. But can you install <laughs> Wine Pack in a Wine? Can you install Wine in a Wine Pack? What? Yeah. I yes, I'm sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> you install Sigwin in that wine pack, and then you install wine on that. <laughs> Let's do that right after we finish work on our Electron web browser. Yeah. Um, a new chapter, elementary. Um, yes. What's this going on about? Yeah, well, this is a Cassidy James Blade, former UX architect at System76, is now a full-time UX architect at Elementary OS, thanks to a large private contribution. Uh, Gnome had also gotten a big contribution as well. And um, he, what, what's neat is uh, uh, Cassidy uh, went into the detail on how he started, how he became 
um, hired at System76 was because he bought a System76 laptop to do development on elementary OS. And he was doing that part time voluntarily. And now he's going to get paid to do it. So nice. but he's still going to be, you know, testing elementary on on um, the laptop and continuing to support System76 in that way as well, because System76 uses elementary on their back end and their software center and whatnot. Yeah. So and um, it's uh yeah. <laughs> It'll be curious to see if uh this will mean that uh, System76 will eventually move to elementary. Yes. Kind of curious to see <laughs> if Pop OS <laughs> becomes uh an elementary spin-off. Uh that said, I That is possibly the dumbest thing I've ever around. heard you say. <laughs> <laughs> And I've known you for six years. I mean, <laughs> uh, I've never really, as much as I can see the usefulness of the uh, Mac OS style, and I've been known to run uh, that particular layout on my uh, laptops every now and then. Sys, uh, Sys, not System76, uh, Elementary seems to take that to like the extreme, and they try to replicate it slash improve on it as much as possible and it's just too much for me mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> hey i've never had a chance to play around with elementary uh but mm -hmm. uh, that's good it, it's good that you know you can take something like a large private donation and be like boom let's do something good with it and now somebody is there full time to work on that i say good on mm -hmm. them good for everyone and uh didn't yeah. system 76 have like job yeah. openings or something. Yeah. Now they need a full-time UX mm -hmm. architect. So apply below and hey. it's all available in the show notes. <laughs> Do you want a slim down refined monochrome version of system 76 desktop? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> XFCE, all the things. Man, we, we can make it happen. But in the meantime, if you want to support our little dog and pony show, head over to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the support button. Uh, we got a couple of ways. Patreon. Amazon affiliate links, you know it, you love it. Uh, Wish Zones, New Eggs, Humble, New Humble comic book bundle just came out. Go get mm -hmm. yourself a copy of that cryptocurrency. It helps us keep the lights on. And a lot of you are responsible, and you are the reason. We keep doing this show every week, other than we probably still do it anyway. But it's nice to be able to pay the bills, not out of our own pocket. Um, yeah. Thank you. I'll give everyone a quick update. Uh, we closed out really good last week. Not last week, last month on Patreon. Mm -hmm. So... All the minus, like, probably five cables I forgot to order because I don't know if you do the same thing when you get ready to order from something on Amazon. It's in your cart and it stays mm -hmm. there for about five to six hours. Because mm -hmm. part of you is like, I don't want to spend that much money. And the other part is, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I forgot something. And it's not like I don't have prime shipping. Like, I couldn't just immediately go back. But we should have Bri Bifrost complete maybe by Friday. Maybe by the parts mm -hmm. will probably arrive Saturday afternoon. To stick everything. Right. But the whole point of this venture is to lock everything down on hardware. So we're going to be able to bring regularly, if we can get them, guests on. Guys. Nice. Yay. Exactly. We'll, we'll be able Yay. to do a four-way, and that's not as kinky as it sounds. Yeah. <laughs> it will be fun. Thanks, everyone, for making this business possible again. So let's get into uh, Slice Pie. Pie. <laughs> Mm, mm. You know what? I, I would have taken, uh, like, I, I was going to say a settling torch, but that's probably what I would use and kind of brown that <laughs> pie just a little bit more so it would stand up. Just do it like a once over the top. There we go. No, it looks like a pie. <laughs> All right. Uh, rove where you want to. Oh, yes. So this first one sucked uh, away far more of my time than I originally expected <laughs> it would. Uh, it says, this is really neat. This is NASA saying, well... Wait, uh, hang, on, hang on, hang on. Say NASA again. NASA. All right, thank you. I just need to okay. make head that eyes. <laughs> uh, so uh, they've released the sauce for the basic software that makes this thing uh, looks like the Mars adulterated nightmare fuel. Yeah. I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have trouble sleeping for what makes the rovers function. Not just the the software, but they've also released the uh, the plans if you would like to build your own. Uh, and it's all available. You can all uh, you can get everything on GitHub, and uh, they also give you a really nice presentation uh, on their website, which mm -hmm. the background is interactive. And once I figured that out, that I could drive the rover about, I spent like fifteen minutes just 
meandering about that page, <laughs> driving yeah. the rover over rocks and trying to climb really hard rocks. It's uh yeah. No, good job, Vasa. Good job. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> that, that, that was kind of interesting how that rolled out because I remember initially seeing the story in like the Google News feed and I was like, boop, boop. And I, I didn't go check out the web zone. I just threw it in our show notes. Then I saw Pedro write that and I was like, what are you on about? So I go to check it. And I was like, you know what? I completely believe you blew 15 to 30 minutes playing around with yeah. this. Yep. Because I, I spent like a solid 45 seconds driving around in circles saying, can I go home now? <laughs> Was I a good rover? That's what a good rover yes. would do. Aww. All right. Uh, Joe, Love. this would be yeah. a cool, um, like $2,500 <laughs> sounds expensive, but if you're doing this for like a class no. project, this this is something you could take this back apart. This is great. Yep. Yeah. This is something all this, all students would, would love to build. And I like the fact that you can make it out of found parts. That's that's really, mm -hmm. really awesome mm -hmm. because it's, it's teaching, you know, creativity and and integrating um, hardware and software together. And I thought this was neat that you can control it by smart your Android smartphone um, or iPhone or Xbox controller, or you can make your own controller. Could. And the, pl the plans are all there. And th there's a gang of room on this thing for a flamethrower. And uh, yes, yes. <laughs> See, the original uh, rovers have like a uh, mining laser on the uh, the top thing this one just has the uh, led display that you can customize with pretty faces but uh yeah no totally uh drilling laser on the rover it'll yes, be please. great man plenty of room yeah. for a hippie digger um <laughs> but the suspension i mean differential pivot six wheel ackerman yes. steering uh you could get into some trouble well you you could get this thing really stuck is what you could do with this mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so one more bit about Raspberry Pi, because all, as you know, mm -hmm. all of us Linux users are filthy hackers, right? That don't yes. pay for mm -hmm. software or something. I don't know mm -hmm. what it is this month. Uh, WPA, it had a good run, man. WPA2, cracking WPA2 just got a whole lot easier. Who was this? This is Bill Buchanan um, on Medium Post, on a Medium Post, I should say. He kind of walks through this business, you know? It, Previously, you needed that four-way handshake. You had to trigger that and get all that together. This basically bypasses this with a Wi-Fi dock card and a Raspberry Pi. I know you're thinking, oh, no, you need to go outside. Well, basically, you know, go full metal like Chuck McGill on your setup at home. You don't have to worry about that unless you get a weak password. Then you do uh, enterprise stuff. You don't need to worry about it. You're relatively safe because you already have back-end authentication, hashtag radius, something like that. But mm -hmm. this is a handy little guide. I shouldn't say, God, don't do this at home, kids, unless it's on your own <laughs> hardware. Uh, walking through, it's like, you know what? A, that's a bit clever. B, okay, now I admittedly, there it is right there. There's a little pie yep. and a little mm -hmm. alpha antenna. You can easily get into, I mean, what, what were we doing for those, like the rainbow attacks? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. what that was the one viable quote unquote way to do the um WPA cracking was to use rainbow tables. Mm -hmm. And now they say it's gotten so much easier. And if you have a good GPU setup uh to do the um the hash calculations. Crack a lot. Yep. Yeah. It will uh take a day maybe if it's like the standard eight character minimum that WPA2 requires. Yeah a day and you got yourself some passwords <laughs> yeah this is awesome i'm definitely gonna be trying this and like i said last week war driving on a raspberry pi is still a thing thanks to kelly linux and a wpa2 cracker, Hi, <laughs> cracker. Uh, and now we're off youtube <laughs> the, um, I think the, this is very neat I enjoy this and I know Pedro I think everyone's been there the first day of moving into a new place you're waiting on the internet of course you have to peruse the mm -hmm. it's, it's like hey, is anybody still that dumb in 2018 come on come on web come on web uh, yeah no they just default to WPA2 now so mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess if you really like uh, don't have passwords that you can memorize A security mm -hmm. and B if you, like I said, Chuck McGill, don't do that. Don't tin foil, <laughs> aluminium foil everywhere in your house. If if you're really paranoid and worried, just set everything to five gigahertz and <laughs> cut your power down to about twenty percent. Now that's going mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's going to be wireless as long as it's basically line of sight, but mm -hmm. nobody's going to be, you know, get new man. No black helicopters. Booga booga. <laughs> <laughs> WPA3 is just around the corner, 10 years away or something like that. I don't the, know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, they say, oh yeah, WPA3 yeah. is coming. Eh, not quite yet. <laughs> this is still ethical hacking. <laughs> so if you would like to tell us why we're not ethical and or good hackers, how can they do that? You can do that very easily by just uh, shouting at us on the street if you happen to run past us. Or you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, uh, hit the contact button, and fill out the form. There may be some AI training that you need to do from the Google CAPTCHA, but meh, that's uh, just par for the course on the internet nowadays. Make sure to pick LWDW on the little choosy box. That's... Uh, that's how we know that you'd like to leave some feedback for this show. Ladies and, and gentlemen, not next week, if I remember device. the option, <laughs> instead of category, it will now say little choosy box. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, that's good. I am not above this. Uh, <laughs> so, Angel writes in, uh, we were talking about XFCE and moving forward, moving off uh, and moving towards GTK3 and what that brought. Right, and they say, hey, Thunar became so, so much more bizarre. Since the move to GTK3, so many small things don't work right. It's very frustrating. And it's still so expletive deleted slow when deleting files from the trash via GVFS trash HD. This bug is still not fixed after all these years to... I'll reply, don't have any of these problems. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. I can't remember the last time I used the trash on Linux. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I do because I looked into I didn't want to set it up. It takes two <laughs> seconds to do it, but it's not as simple as right clicking because the trash bin to me should be named purgatory because <laughs> that's what it is. It's not in the trash and it I very well because I'm not clever need two or three of those files in there, especially like for a show or something like why did I delete that? And I was like, oh, let's go check purgatory. <laughs> then after you've checked it for a week or two, then you can be like, okay, I, I can finally send you to Tartarus and all that fun stuff. Uh, I'm running 412 and I'm not having any, I guess maybe if you're trying to roll into the 413, which is not really a release. Yeah, the 412 doesn't have all the GTK3 bits yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I'll let all of those get ironed out. I mean, yes, I've once a month, once every other month, I'll go check in. It's like, how's it coming along? XFC4 is like a wizard, man. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, that looks neat. I want to play with it. Then I catch myself. It's like, you can't do that with this production box. It's like, man, but, but. And it's like, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's why you you keep like a cheapo laptop down the side just so you can try the things. <laughs> I no, I use tablets for everything else, man. It's, it's, That's why you keep it on the desk. It's just for trying to things. That's uh, yes. why the X two forty is always <laughs> next to the desk or in my backpack. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're yes. not going to do any better than that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we're not. It's been fun. It's been Yay. real. <laughs> so, how about some credits? For the 130th time, <laughs> Linux Weekly Daily Yay! Wednesday. Quit Yay! pretending you can count. I, I, I can't count. I'm just reading <laughs> off of what it says in the title. Aww. <laughs> or read. <laughs> and for tomorrow's game stream, read. we're going to play Guns of Icarus Alliance. Wow, so <laughs> reruns. Yes. <laughs> well, I wasn't able to join last week because I was at the convention. But <laughs> So you're going to play for like 20 minutes and then the game's going to crash? We'll see, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I like that it wasn't just me. I, I was spectating. It's like, yep, just crashed. And it was like yeah. rocket cars flashback. There were like two yeah. people who didn't crash. Everyone else just... <laughs> yeah. Bye, everyone. We love you. Bye, Bye. everyone. <laughs> <laughs>